What is up guys, Tech James here. This video is going to show you guys how to set up RetroArch on your PS Vita or PS TV in 2020. Some people like to call this RetroArch. I don't know how you'd pronounce it, but I just call it RetroArch. So in this video, I will show you guys how to install it, how to get the PC looking GUI on there. When you normally install it on the PS Vita, it looks very basic and quite a few people say it looks horrible. So I'll show you how to make it look like the PC and PS3 version as well. And it's actually very easy to set up. And I will also be showing you guys how to add your own games. All you really need for this is a PS Vita with custom firmware on. Doesn't really matter about the version. As long as you've got Trinity, Hencore, some kind of custom firmware it should work perfectly fine so what we're going to do to start this off is we're just going to go ahead and we are going to open up Vita Shell. what we're going to do is we're going to use Vita Shell just to transfer all of the files we need so we're going to press select we're going to go and connect our PS Vita or PS TV to our computer via FTP via USB doesn't really matter both work the same let's go and connect it and then I'll show you guys what to do so once you guys are over on your computer, you want to go to the links in the description of this video. The first link is the official RetroArch website or RetroArc, whatever you want to call it. But what you guys want to do is just click on the downloads tab and this will bring us out to the download section. So what we're going to do here is scroll down and we are looking for PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV. This will work on the PS Vita and of course the PS TV as well. So what we're going to do is just click on the download link right here and it will actually download the VPK for us. So the VPK, depending on how good your Wi-Fi is should only take around a minute to download so we're just going to wait for that and then we can go on to the second link. Okay guys so once WetRouch is done that's fine we can leave it in our downloads folder for now we will be using it in a minute but what we want to do first is we want to go to the WetRouch assets page and this is over on the official WetRouch github so what we want to do here is get the official kind of like GUI um, the GUI which is on the PS Vita version is very basic and it looks really rubbish so what I like to do is get the PC GUI and it just looks a lot better um, not many people know about this I think I made a video about this maybe last year but I just thought I should redo this whole guide and basically do everything in one. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on the green clone or download button. We're then going to simply click download zip. Now this shouldn't take too long. Um, it's quite a big file. It's got a few assets in there, but we're basically just going to wait for this. And once that's done, we can go into our downloads and find our two files. So here we are guys, we've got RetroArch.vpk and we've got RetroArch Assets. What we're going to do first is double click on RetroArch Assets. There's only one um, kind of like asset folder that we need. Well, you can use multiple ones, but the one that I like to take is the XMB and that is kind of the only one that you want if you want the PC kind of theme on the um, PS Vita version. So what we're going to do, we're going to get XMB and we're just going to drag and drop that in our downloads folder. Simply just wait for it. It might take a few minutes for it to just, you know, transfer everything out. Um, um, but yeah, just simply wait. Okay, so once that is done, what we can actually do is delete the assets folder. We don't actually need anything else from it, literally just the XMB. The other thing we do need is a ROMs folder. Now, how I made this was right click, new folder, and simply just call it ROMs. And what I've done is made more new folders inside. So right click, new folder, and I basically just gave these names. So I've got like Game Boy Color, uh, Game Boy Advance, Sega Master System, and I just put a couple of ROMs in each one. Now, it's entirely up to you where you guys decide to get your ROMs from. Obviously, See, you can back them up off your own cartridges if you wish to. So now we can actually start copying stuff across. Make sure your PS Vita is connected. We're going to get RedCharge.VPK and we're going to drag and drop that on the root of the PS Vita. This might take maybe about two minutes, so simply just wait for it. So guys, once that is done, we have also got our ROMs folder. Now, you can put your ROMs folder in different places, but I like to put mine on my UXO, so I'm going to drag and drop my ROMs folder as well. Um, this should be really fast. Obviously, it depends how many games you've got. Now, we're going to copy across this later, um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to go back onto our PS Vita. We're going to install RetroArch, install a few things, and then we'll be able to install the XMB a bit later. So we are back and what we have to do now is find our VPK file and that should be over on the UXO. Obviously we've got our ROMs folder and that should be just here. We don't need to worry about that. We just need to find retroarch.vpk. We need to press the cross on it. We need to press cross again and then we're just going to wait for it to install. Now don't worry if it's stuck on 0% like mine is for now. Um, for some reason you've got to wait about 2 minutes and then it should start installing. I don't know if this is just me or everyone but if it is stuck on 0% then don't worry, simply just wait about 5 minutes and by then it should actually be installed. 
So as you guys can see, I waited a couple of minutes and now it's pretty much at 100%. So once it is installed, all we have to do is back out to our home screen and we actually just want to launch it up. Uh, when we launch it up, it's just going to kind of set up a few things and then we can actually go back over to our computer. But let's just find it on our home screen. As you can see, here is mine. Retroarch by LibRetro. Let's just press X or cross and then we can go and start it up. So as soon as it starts up, it's going to create the data folder, and that's what we need. Um, and basically, it's just going to load like this. Now, this is the current theme that you will have when you load it up. And as you guys can see, it does work. It just doesn't look very nice. Of course, you can load content. You can find your ROMs folder and stuff like that. Uh, with RetroArch, you do actually press the circle to search for stuff. So as you can see, we can find our ROMs on our UXO. But yeah, it just doesn't really look that good. Um, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to go back onto our PC and we can actually get the nice theme. So we're going to go down to Quit Retroarch, I'm going to go and press Circle on this one, then it's going to quit, then we just need to completely close it down, and we need to start up VitaShell again. So simply just start up VitaShell, press Select, let's go and connect it to our computer for the one last time, and then we can actually copy across our XMB folder. Okay guys, so we are back. We now just need to find our XMB folder that we recently downloaded. We need to make sure our PS Vita is connected and this time we actually need to look for the data folder. Now inside of the data folder, we can find the RetroArch folder and if we just click on the little arrow, we can find the assets folder. So basically this XMB folder is just going to be dragged and drops into the RetroArch assets folder and then we've just got to wait now. This might take a few minutes. I can't remember how long it took me last time, so give it around about five minutes. Um, actually, no, it says here only one minute and 30 seconds. So there you go, not as bad as I expected. So we're simply going to wait for this. This is going to give us that nice looking kind of like PC, PS3 type theme. It just looks a lot better than the current one. It will take about five more seconds to boot, uh, but it's 100% worth it. And once we've got this installed, we can load RetroArch again, and then I'll show you guys how to play the games. And then that is pretty much it. Alright guys, so once we are back and we've got this new file copied across, all we can do from here is simply open up RetroArch and let's see, hopefully it would have worked. Now I'm going to show you guys how to launch up games as well and that is incredibly easy. Now as I said before, it might take a couple of extra seconds just to boot up this time, um, but simply just wait for it. And as you can see, it's now looking very nice, just like it does on your computer, uh, maybe on your PlayStation, on a few other devices as well. Basically, this is the best version and this is the latest version of RetroArch as well. So what we can do from here is we can actually just play our games. Um, obviously there's plenty of other settings, you know, we've got settings here, we've got favourites, we've got um, like history, uh, music, and we've also got like internet connection as well, and you can scan your folders and stuff like that. I'll probably make a few other videos. I just wanted this video to be the simple kind of like setup just to get you guys going. But what we can do from here is we can actually scroll down and we can go on to load content, press circle. We need to go onto our UXO or wherever your ROMs folder is and you just want to press circle when you find it. Let's try a Game Boy Color game. So what we're going to do, we're going to press circle on Game Boy Color. Let's go on Dinosaur. I don't know what that is. Now we need to select our Game Boy Color emulator. So we've got Gam Battle, we've got Gear Boy and we've got TBG Jewel something. I don't know what that one is. Uh, Gam Battle, I do know this one. So we're simply going to press circle on the emulator that we want to use and it will just load up as easy as that. Oh, so this is a Disney game. Disney presents dinosaur. I've never seen this. I literally just saw it on my computer and um, I just thought, why not just copy it across? So there you go. Game Boy Color games running. Now, I'm sure you guys know these games work perfectly fine. The sound works perfectly fine as well. Um, RetroArch is pretty good. There isn't really many issues with it um, on playing like Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, um, you know, other games like that. Sega Master System games, they also work very well. Is this like Mario Bros in dinosaur form? Oh no, it's not. It's something different. But um, hmm, that's very interesting. I'm not 100% sure of what this game is about really. Is it a for film? I don't know. So you guys can also use the online updater. This is where you can get update assets, update joypad profiles, update cheats and update overlays as well. There's plenty of cool stuff you can actually do in here. Um, what we can actually do is we can try out another game. If we go into load content and we go into our UXO, we go into ROMs. Why don't we try that Sonic the Hedgehog game for the Sega Master System. Let's just choose the first one. Genesis Plus. I think that was a good emulator. So some games work better than others. And this game does work very well. Um, let me just turn up the sound a bit so you guys can hear it. Is Sonic copyrighted? I don't know. I guess I'll find out. But yeah, um, 
I'd say the Sega games are very, very good on the PS Vita. Uh, this is the Sega Master System, I believe. But yeah guys, this was a quick RetroArch setup guide for the PlayStation Vita and PSTV. This is currently the latest version of RetroArch, uh, but this video will pretty much support uh, many versions. And if it becomes outdated, I'll just make a new one anyway. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I will have some more videos coming soon, maybe custom themes, cheats, and kind of like icons on like your games and stuff, um, where you can see your games and like your, um, you know, like recently played and stuff where you can see icons and um, but yeah if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one